Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. As most of you know, today is the opening day of the 2021 LCS season. Uh, you know, yes, it's like spring split. There is still kind of a spring and a summer. There's spring playoffs, summer playoffs, but it is this one big long 2021 season and it all kicked off today. The first game of the day being TSM and FlyQuest. It just got over a couple minutes ago. This is a rematch from the summer 2020 finals, but both of these teams are looking very, very different since then. Uh, like most of the players on both rosters have changed uh, and this went from being, you know, the two best teams in the league competing for the championship to now, like, I don't know, the fourth, fifth, sixth best teams in the league. Um, so they're still evenly matched. It should still be pretty competitive. It was interesting. I was going to be hyped up for it. Obviously, I pulled out the jersey just for this one for opening day. Uh, but it was definitely, you know, not as exciting or as hyped as like the finals or anything. The winner of this game was going to be uh, in a good position. A loser to this game, you know, losing to kind of a middle of the pack team wasn't going to be a good start of the season for either one of these teams. Uh, unfortunately, I think the end result is not great news for either of these teams teams after watching this game but we'll be talking all about that in today's video before we get that i just want to mention a word from today's sponsor which is draft buff this is a fantasy esports website and app you can play it right now in the browser uh you can download it in the google play store and you can check it out on the app store there's a lot of ways uh to play uh and right now they actually have draft royale going on which you guys are looking at the draft screen of that right now all the different players as you can see they have like monetary values on the side you have a set budget of so much money and you get to mix and match players different combinations of players each week uh to try and earn the most points while staying under the salary cap you get to be like a general manager and it's honestly pretty fun it is a really really awesome idea so if you guys are interested in uh you know checking this out playing draft royale against tons of other people every single week and trying to score as many points as possible definitely check out uh draft buff it's going to be the first link in the description below and it's going to be the pinned comment on this video uh if you do check them out i would appreciate it so so much and so would they shout out to draft buff uh, again for supporting us with that being said here we go uh let's talk about TSM and FlyQuest. So, uh, FlyQuest was able to start out the game strong. This is a first blood 12 minutes in kind of a slow and boring game honestly tsm uh that's honestly one of the big concerning things is from the lock-in tournament tsm was the slowest uh and least bloody team in the league they are 10th place and that's pretty crazy especially when they have you know they brought in sword art spent all this money on him he's talking about oh we want to play lpl style they're talking about oh we want to play fast all this stuff for tsm to be the slowest and most boring team uh is a little bit concerning and that is not good because we've seen uh the best teams in the world last couple of years are these aggressive in your face fast-paced teams uh and lcs needs to go that way so tsm's really kind of setting us back a little bit either way you know both these teams neither one was playing very fast 12 minutes in the first blood uh licorice on his camille roam down to mid lane uh power of evil is able to get a nice knockback there but the camille then flashes onto him with the ult uh sword art is not able to knock the camille out of the uh out of camille's ult that's actually one of the reasons you pick alistar into camille is to be able to headbutt the camille out of her ult and then you kind of break down the ult so your guy can can get out of there um but as you can see unfortunately uh power of evil would go down to just a massive all-in of the oriana shockwave uh the hecarim ult and the camille ult. i mean they they sold out for power of evil but it definitely worked uh they got his flash this was right after he had just tp'd back to lane and obviously they pick up the first blood so this was uh really kind of devastating early on for tsm but uh they were they were able to kind of fight back from this it was okay they they did end up fine in the end uh again we fast forward uh, I don't know when this was about 22 minutes into the game you can see the score is only two to zero but TSM has a 3k gold lead so even though uh, TSM didn't get first blood TSM was taking all the towers they got the first four or five towers of the game I believe before FlyQuest even got one um, so they're kind of out macroing him uh, out macroing them across the map but TSM definitely had a better kind of early game composition uh, and FlyQuest was going for the heavy heavy scaling uh, so it kind of made sense you know FlyQuest was playing safe kind of uh, putting the pressure on TSM to make plays and to run up a big enough gold lead uh, and this was kind of the first big team fight of the game 23 minutes into the game you can see TSM gets an engage uh, onto the Camille there, but obviously she's able to ult. She's able to walk away. Diamond gets a nice rel engage onto the back line of TSM. Uh, and, but Huni does kill Licorice. Diamond's able to kill Spica. And then a big misfortune ult from Loss, honestly, just shreds through FlyQuest. And in the end, it is a three for two for TSM. And things were looking, honestly, pretty good for TSM at that point. Again, they're up three and a half K gold at 23 minutes and things are looking good. But uh, as you guys can see in the end, uh, FlyQuest was able to take this one down they were able to come back they started stacking up the dragons they got the infernal drakes we don't actually have any more clips uh in the lcs I and mean, we can talk about that but the game just ended you know if you guys want to watch it you can go do that we're more just kind of breaking down what happened uh flyquest was able to take this one down and again uh when we look at the final scores and stuff 
uh, some some of the same stuff again from TSM that we saw in the lock-in tournament. Uh, two and eleven game from Sword Art and Lost combined. Their bot lane still just really not looking good. Huni actually looked decent this game on the gangplank. Uh, he actually won the lane pretty convincingly against Licorice. He solo took the tower. Uh, he was able to build up a significant gold lead. Unfortunately, he didn't really get to do much with that. This I thought was Power of Evil's best game, which I thought was a really really awesome sign because he kind of had a slow start in the lock-in tournament. He was five and two on the Cinder. He was like four and one at one point. Uh, he actually had a decent game after dying for the first blood, being able to rebound from that. Um, Lost had a okay game. I'm not going to say a good game or anything, but he had a couple big Misfortune ultimates. And honestly, Misfortune was just really, really hard to play in a FlyQuest composition. I mean, look at this. This is Camille, Oriana, Seraphine, Rel, Hecarim. They are just dive bombing at the immobile carries. And you can see TSM has plenty of that Misfortune and Syndra. Yes, PoE was able to stay out of harm's way for the most part, but they were zeroing in on Lost, who, you know, I'm not going to argue he has great positioning or anything like that. We've seen him get caught out a bunch. We've seen him uh, not be a very high damage AD carry. Uh, but when he was able to stay back, he got some stuff going. But, uh, I mean, TSM's bot lane, they did all right in this game. They got some plates. They took tower early. They, they built up a little bit of a lead for themselves. Um, but after that, I, I mean, it was just game over. Uh, the, the lane shouldn't have been too hard. They're against Rel, uh, Seraphine. Uh, you know, Seraphine's just trying to kind of scale up. She's going to be a more supportive style of carry and everything. And I mean, that's what she was able to do. This was a Moonstone Seraphine. They weren't looking to like play crazy aggressive in lane. And obviously, Misfortune Alistar is going to be pretty uh, strong in lane. What uh, does kind of suck uh, is that, uh, you know, neither team, I think, looked that great in this game. Uh, the really, really concerning thing for TSM is, again, they have the stronger um, early team composition where they're going to have push in bot lane with Smith's Fortune and the Alistar. They should have push in mid lane with the Cinder against Orianna. Uh, and they were giving up Drakes to FlyQuest. FlyQuest ended up getting uh, Infernal Soul. TSM had just one dragon. And that's not good. For the team that's supposed to be winning early game, they should be stacked up the drakes at least having two or three you know maybe you don't get all the way to the soul because then the other team starts scaling and kind of coming back uh, but for tsm to be dominating all over the map to have five towers to zero or five towers to one have a three four thousand gold lead and just not be able to play around the dragons well was really really concerning also tsm took the first herald in the game uh they ended up spawning at mid and it didn't even crash on the tower so that was more gold that they left on the map they really needed to press their advantages in the early game and they didn't do that another problem that i have with this tsm composition uh, is that again, I, well, two things that I want to talk about. One, I said TSM is the slowest team in the league. Uh, and you would think that the slowest team in the league would want to probably uh, pick for scaling. Uh, maybe, you know, they're like, okay, we're not going to be the slowest team in the league anymore. We're going to play fast and aggressive. And they didn't do that. We, we saw again that at 23 minutes, they had zero kills. They got their first kill at right around 23 minutes. Um, so that wasn't great. You know, if you're going to pick the more early game comp, the comp that gets hard outscaled like TSM did in this game, uh, you probably don't want to be the slowest team in the league. You might want to be a little bit more of an aggressive team. I just think this didn't fit their team identity well. I, I do believe they should play faster. I do believe they should play more aggressive, but they don't and they didn't. So that's one reason why I don't like this draft. Another thing I do not like about this draft is... They got Talia, who I think is a massive power pick. I love Talia. I've been talking about it on Twitter, talking about it on YouTube. I think Talia is pretty busted right now when she has setup. They have such little setup for Spica on the Talia, and, you know, Spica really did nothing in this game. Uh, he didn't really have the best alts. Uh, you know, they didn't really use the Talia optimally. I don't think Spica, like, played uh, well this game by any means, but... When you see other teams play in Talia, you have a Galio, you have a Twisted Fate, you have a Renekton, you have a Camille, you have some really easy CC uh, to, to stun the person, whatever, taunt them, uh, and then you just get a rake from Talia, and Talia is able to do a ton of damage, one-shot people, it's super, super easy. You have Syndra and Gangplank. Gangplank is going to do nothing for you, so you're already staying away from the top lane. And yes, Syndra can set up some stuns here and there, but... It's not a Twisted Fate, it's not a Galio, it's not a Renekton, you know, it's not as easy. So, I can see how it is a, it is a pretty strong mid uh, 2v2 where, where it could work out, um, but they just really never got any of those plays set up. It, it never really worked out amazing. Uh, and the Orianna, the Hecarim, these guys were able to scale so, so much. Camille was just running all over the place. Diamond actually had a decent game on the Rel, and I think Rel is a really, really strong champion um, that TSM really hasn't been able to utilize or anything like that. Um, but again, on the side of FlyQuest, you know, a really amazing comeback from them. They're a team that was down three to four thousand gold um at like 20 minutes they were able to fight back they did have the stronger uh scaling composition and they kind of played to that but again I don't think they played like amazingly well either. Uh, I think TSM probably should have had chances to extend their lead further. I think FlyQuest, while yes, they were scaling and trying to play safe, 
I think most often if you're down 4,000 gold at 20 minutes, that's maybe not in the best position. Uh, you know, I think they could have played it a little bit better, um, but they, they, there was a lot of positive signs. I think Diamond, who didn't look very good in the lock-in tournament, looked pretty good in this game. I think Jose Diodo so far has proven to be very, very solid, and, and Lakerish had a very, very good game on Camille. I think his score uh, is five and four, which, you know, doesn't really say like an amazing game necessarily, but uh, but uh, I think he was much better than that scoreline looks. You know, he was putting constant pressure on Lost. Lost never got to be comfortable because Licorice was always waiting there to just absolutely one-shot him. Obviously, we saw his play on the first blood. He was constantly making plays. It was, uh, this was honestly, uh, I think he played way better in this game than he did throughout the lock-in tournament. Uh, so again, uh, when we take a look at these teams, I, I think most people have these teams between fourth and like seventh in the LCS right now. So uh, winning this game puts you in a position where you have potential to, you know, move up and maybe do some damage. And... Uh, and the loser of this game is really in kind of a weird position where uh, if you want to be making it to world, you got to go, you got to go top three, obviously. And if you're losing to teams in the four, five, six range, that's not great. Now, yes, it is the first game of the season. Uh, we still have time to develop and everything over the course of the year. Spring split is only six weeks this year. So you do have a shortened timeline where you got to start kind of ramping stuff up. I mean, also when we take a look at TSM's uh, schedule, they play cloud nine tomorrow. So it doesn't get any easier for them. Yes, they have CLG on Sunday. It seems like CLG is kind of in the middle of a death spiral. So Hopefully that's an easy game where they can begin to bounce back. But, I mean, this was really a game that you'd like to win. And by losing this, they're not in a great position. Uh, more just troubles from their bot lane. Uh, there, there's this tweet where, who's the best investment? Top tier $5 million Taiwanese Worlds uh, 2020 second place or some Argentinian boy. Like, I mean, the, the memes are, are very, very accurate. Where TSM goes and spends all this money. Uh, and again... It's hard to know exactly. Uh, like, one, I don't think Sword Art is playing great. Uh, you know, just on the eye test, he's not looking like a Core JJ or a Vulcan or even a Huhi right now, which is a little bit disappointing, especially when you're spending all that money on him. Um, but I do not think loss has been that amazing either. And it's got to be, you know, there is a direct correlation between AD carry and support uh, and everything like that as well. So it's kind of tough. You know, I don't know. TSM just has a lot of issues right now. Uh, as soon as one person starts playing better, somebody else starts playing worse. Like I do think this was Power of Evil's best game uh, that we've seen uh, for him on TSM so far. But there's just other issues everywhere. But if you're a FlyQuest fan, you got to be excited. You got to be hyped up. Uh, yes, you have this kind of cheap budget team and you're taking down TSM, this team that spent uh, probably more just on Sword Art than you maybe did on your entire roster, which is pretty crazy. I know Licorice's buyout was probably pretty big. He's probably hasn't has a, a decent salary, but uh, we know TSM has spent way, way, way more money on this roster. Um, so I don't know. It's a weird time. Again, I think TSM is in big trouble. I think this is a bad look for them. I think this is a bad game to be losing. If you want to be top three, you got to be beating, you know, Evil Geniuses, 100 Thieves, Cloud9, Team Liquid. You should be able to win these games in the middle of the pack. Yes, it is just one game. We still have plenty of time. Uh, you know, Spring Split still does doesn't really matter all that much you're ramping up towards summer but it seems like uh from week to week they're not really progressing that much uh they are still a very very slow team they're playing a bad style they have weird drafts they're not executing uh and they're losing to you know kind of middle random tier teams uh way way too often for a team spending this much money and for a team who claims they want to go have international success but that is pretty much it for this video today guys definitely drop a like if you enjoyed it leave a comment down below what do you think about TSM and FlyQuest right now? Do you think TSM played bad? FlyQuest played good? Are you hyped up for FlyQuest? Are you shitting on TSM? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on anything we talked about in today's video. Subscribe to update on my latest content. Remember to check out Draft Buffs. Hopefully I catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace!